Hey! You're not going to find the subscribe button there. It's just under the video. What are you doing inside of my 3D printer? Click it. Now. Sorry. <laughs> this is the Elegoo Mars 3, the brand new MSLA printer by Elgoo about to hit the market this September, I think. It's a great little machine and I've recently did an unboxing and review video for this. Oh, this is the Elegoo Mars 2 Pro, the predecessor to the Mars 3, my favorite 3D printer for uh, pretty much anything. It's smaller than the other 3D printers that I have, but when you do want to do little quick jobs, it is great, it's very reliable and very easy to manage because it is so small. This, however, is... That's a lot of damage. Ugh. A custom Elegoo Saturn that I'm yet to use. This is the arguably the big brother to the Mars 2 Pro and now the Mars 3. Uh, it has a larger build plate, larger VAT, but it's overall more expensive. Now together these make a 3D printing addiction as you can see. <laughs> but today I wanted to test out the Mars 3 against the Mars 2 Pro and against the LG Saturn. Now there are some obvious differences just by looking at it because the LG Saturn is a lot larger. But does larger mean better? And that's what we're going to be answering today. Now I'd be remiss not to mention the video that was put out a few, I think last week by Uncle Jesse. He did a video comparing the Mars 2 Pro and a Mars Pro compared to the Mars 3. Um, but he didn't compare it to a Saturn. So I'm claiming that one as my own. <laughs> <laughs> so without further ado, let's prepare these printers for printing. I'm going to be using all of the same models, and we'll be talking more about those in a little bit. The build plates on all three 3D printers are built and functionally pretty much the same. The Mars 2 Pro has the smallest build plate and a slimline locking knob at the top and two screws, one at the front and one on the right to loosen when leveling the build plate. The Mars 3 has the same knob but a slightly larger build plate compared to the Mars 2 Pro. However, the Saturn has much larger build plate than both of them but doesn't have this slimline knob. <laughs> Just for fun, you've seen the comparisons between each other, but this piece of paper is cut to the new size of the Elegoo Jupiter that was announced this week. Oh boy, that's going to be a big one. The construction of the Z-axis is pretty similar as well, both the Mars machines rock in a single rail, whereas the Saturn sports a dual rail axis. The Saturn and the Mars 3 share the VAT locking system of two screws that are removed at each side whereas the Mars 2 Pro has a small bracket each side to hold it down. I will say I do prefer the Mars 2 Pro for this, as I'm less likely to drop the screws into the resin when removing it. Speaking of VATs, the Saturn and the Mars 2 both have a similar design, except the Saturn is obviously much larger and sports some carry handles. The height is largely the same, but the Saturn does have some feet on the bottom or some screws that stick out, whereas the Mars 2 Pro does not. The Mars 3 VAT is deeper than both, and also a funky shape, which means it doesn't fit on any earlier machines. The Mars 2 Pro and the Mars 3 are leveled in the same way, pressing down on a piece of paper then raising it by 0.1mm to lift it until you can remove the paper with minor resistance. The Saturn has its own levelling card but you don't need to adjust it afterwards. Now they are levelled, it's time to print. I've treated all the FEP with some dry lubricant to help the FEP release during the print. There's lots of other lubricants you can use but this one seems to work quite well. And I'm printing all the miniatures in the same resin, I'm using Elegoo ABS Light Grey. It is currently cheaper to buy two 500ml bottles than it is to buy one litre when the one litre is on offer and I'll leave a link to both products down in the description below to Amazon, which are affiliate links and they really help out. Whilst they are printing, let me tell you about the miniatures I am printing today as they are by a designer called Miniatures Blueprint who are sponsoring today's video. Miniatures Blueprint is a new designer hitting the miniatures STL market. Their goal is to produce high quality, pre-supported miniatures for games like Dungeons and Dragons for gaming, painting or just collecting. Today we're printing four of their miniatures, we're printing the Baylor Lord, Lord of the Underworld. We're also printing two of the three Dwarven Bomber crew. We have the Foldrick Mad Bomber and the Kundrick Scientist. And finally, Zindam, the Great Sorcerer. Baylor is available on Miniatures Blueprint's Patreon, as it's part of this month's release, with epic models arriving every month at patreon.com slash miniaturesbp. Zindam and the Bomber Crew are available on my mini factory right now, as well as a whole host of other miniatures, and there's a 50% discount code available with the code MYMINIBP, which can be found at myminifactory.com slash users slash miniaturesblueprint. That's right, 50% discount on anything on their My Mini Factory store using the code MYMINIBP. 
All the links and information can be found in the pinned comment as well as the description. And you can get updates directly from Miniatures Blueprints by following them on Facebook. Thank you very much to Miniatures Blueprint for sponsoring today's video. And thank you to you guys at home for checking out the links. The more support you show to the sponsors of these videos means companies like these are more likely to work with me in the future. And that helps support me. So thank you for checking the links. The first set of miniatures were printed with my standard settings, which are on screen now. I sliced them all using Cheeto Box, but the Mars 3 was sliced with the Pro version. Now we've got the first set printed, I'm going to be cleaning them up in Elegoo's new wash and cure bundle, the Mercury X. I'm going to wash them in isopropyl alcohol for around 3 minutes and then cure them for the same amount of time, and then compare the prints against each other. So I got the first three sets printed. For some reason, the Mars 2 Pro just didn't want to print the Baylor Lord at all. I've printed the miniatures three times on each printer and I just couldn't get it to wear once, which is terrible. <laughs> I've got the other three miniatures to compare between printers and then the Baylor Lord for the Mars 3 and the, the Saturn. Now this section is going to get a little ad hoc because we're going to have like some real close-ups of the miniatures. I will say they all look fantastic just at these standard stock settings at 0.05 per layer. Just on, on initial inspection, all the miniatures look great. Like the Mad Bomber looks cool. His beard came out great. The folds in his clothes look awesome. Same with the Country Scientist as well. Looks fantastic. And then Zindan with the the robe. The robe just came out perfectly and it looks really good. And it looks great on all three miniatures, even with these close-ups. Because when you're comparing these 3D printers, what we're really comparing is the screens, right? Because the, the Mars 3 has a 4K screen, whereas the Mars 2 and the Saturn have a 2K screen. But when they're all printed at the same layer height, they're probably gonna look quite similar until you really start getting in depth, which is why I've got one of these, which I definitely bought one of these before Uncle Jesse did, I promise. <laughs> oh, he's gonna hate me. So I've got a light box here set up um, and we're gonna have like a real close up of some of the miniatures and see what they really look like under the microscope. So as you can see, this is a close up of the Fodrig Mad Bomber uh, from the Mars 2. And as you can see, like on the forehead, you can see the lacerations or the aliasing on his head because they're the separate layers that have been made. Because obviously the way the manufacturing process works, as we get higher, we need to reduce the shape to create that because it's all made in essentially strips, you know, in like flat pieces. If you're making these out of paper and you like build them up in stacks, you know. So you can see like the lacerations on the head where if you look at the Mars 3, if we put the Mars 3 just next to it and have a look there, you can still see those. But I don't know if I'm just... <laughs> I don't know if I'm being biased, but I think they look hard, they're that hard to see. I should say this is under a microscope at extreme magnification. If I look at these with my naked eye, I can just see the lacerations, you know, I can just see the aliasing. Whereas you can see this quite clearly because it's under a microscope. And I think so, this sort of thing is quite interesting. Because again, when, you, when you're comparing like prints against each other, if we now look at the Saturn, you still get the aliasing, but the details almost look slightly bubblier, like not quite as defined. And that's probably because we were looking with a larger screen. I'm 100% sure. I do think it's interesting though. Again, once the, these have primer on, you're probably not gonna be able to see them even more, but when they're painted and varnished, etc., they're, they're gonna be like non-existent. But this is at the highest setting that I printed them at. I've actually printed them again in 0.03. So we can have a look at those as well. If you look at the same models, but at 0.03 layer height, using very similar settings. I think I sped it up a little bit. And the print time was a lot larger as well because we basically printed it at half, half the depth. This one is off the Mars 2 Pro. You almost can't even see those lines uh, which were originally there. So if you look somewhere else, you can just kind of see them even under the microscope. Um, if you look at it in person, you can see a reflection, but nothing. Like basically nothing, which is insane. There we go, we can just see them on his thigh. You can see them more clearly there. And I think that's really cool. This is on the Mars 2 Pro, so this is the cheapest machine. We compare that to the Mars 3 in the same position. Again, you can still see them, but I, but on on close up, I can't even I can't see them on this machine. I really can't see the lines, <laughs> which is really cool. And then on the Saturn as well, Again, the details coming out fantastic. Potentially, maybe probably that might be to do with the cleaning process. It might not quite have got washed properly, but you can see, you can just see the de the details look insane. Like for example, if you look at his chest with the, the dynamite and stuff, all the details, the, like the face looks fantastic and they, they, they all look insane. So if we go, there is a minor difference, especially between the Elgoo Saturn and the Mars 3, but this is just so minor. This is just under, under extreme magnification. Now, if we compared, the Mars 3 
dwarf to the Mars 2 Pro dwarf, but a 0.5 layer height, I'd think you can be able to tell the massive difference. So if you look at the Mars 2 there on his face, and then we look at the Mars 3, but at the 0.03 layer height, you can see that there's a bit like a drastic difference, uh, which is really impressive for, again, such cheap machines. But we're really working hard to try and see the difference because we're using all the same resin. We're only changing, changing the layer height. And this is only extreme because we are printing this one at half the depth of the first one, which is quite insane. And two different machines. I did print pretty much all of them in ABS like grey, but I did print one more set at 0.3 layer height. Uh, in Soraya Tech Fast Grey, again, YouTube's favorite resin. I'm quite liking it. And if we have a close up of this guy, because of the color, the details are even harder to spot. So I might have to boost the contrast on this, but you can't see anything on his head, hardly anything in terms of aliasing. And if you look at his, his thigh again, you can just, just see them. But that could be to do with the color as well. Again, on really close to inspection, I can't really see the difference between the two. I think the color of the resin is adding to a lot of the difference compared to compared to the actual print. Now, I have gone through and pretty much examined all of the prints compared to each other um, because I've printed all of them three times in 0.05, 0.03, and then 0.03, but in Soraya Tech resin. And I think they all have the advantages and disadvantages. The main advantage of the two printers against the Mars 2 Pro is that they can print the Bail Lord and he can't. <laughs> but the Saturn prints really real high quality, but I think the quality is slightly worse, ever so slightly worse. The details are a little bit more bubbly compared to the Mars 2 Pro and especially to the Mars 3. There is quite a difference between the two. But again, the screen between the Mars 3 and the Saturn is very different, which makes sense. Now the advantage of the Saturn is that it has a huge build plate, so you can print a lot more at the same time. Between the Mars 2 and the Mars 3, there is a minor difference, but again, when you're looking at the miniature with your naked eye, you can hardly tell the difference. On magnification inspection, you can see the difference. I think there is quite a clear difference. But realistically, what it comes down to, unless you're printing like scale replicas at teeny tiny scale, um, I don't think you're really gonna see the difference between like normal like tabletop miniatures like what we're printing today. What I will say is that the Mars 3 is, is the leader, all three printers, purely be through speed because this guy, this was printing the miniatures around about an hour faster on each print which is quite a large difference compared to the 2k the two 2k screens that we were comparing now i appreciate this is quite a boring topic for some people but i do think it's quite interesting and being able to look at all these different miniatures at all different layer heights and like looking at the speeds and the quality is really interesting to me and i, I quite enjoyed this project so hopefully you guys did as well um, but my rec recommendations is that if you want a lot of miniatures very quick, you look at the Saturn or the Mars 3. Now, the Saturn is more expensive, but you can print a lot more at once. It will print it all slower than the same build height as the Mars 3, but it will print more at once. So in overall, you'll probably save time. If you're wanting like really high quality prints, probably future proof for at least a couple of maybe a year or so before i'll release the next printer then i'd recommend the mars 3. if you are on a budget and you are looking for a good 3d printer the mars 2 is an excellent printer and i don't think it really needed updating yet because the mars 3 only saves time in my opinion for these types of prints now there's probably other benefits for all the different screens and stuff that i've not really touched on but this is more about which is best for miniatures because that's what i'm most interested in and I think all three printers are absolutely fantastic. It's just the Mars 2, it's the smallest build plate, and it prints around the same time as the LNU Saturn, whereas the Mars 3 is a lot faster. So if I was going to choose as like a first printer, I'd look, I'd look at the Mars 3 or the Mars 2 Pro. If I was looking for something to upgrade because I'm, I'm fed up with printing so slowly, I'd look at the Saturn just because it can print more at once. But that does lead to more failures at the same time, so it's like swings and roundabouts you know they all have their own advantages and disadvantages and maybe you've come up with some of your own while watching this video let me know down in the comments uh, but that's it uh, i've got loads of these miniatures i don't know what to do with them so let me know what i could do with them down in the comments as well that'd be very handy thank you very much to miniatures blueprint for sponsoring this video and all of these miniatures are really cool I, the baylor lord is awesome and the bad bomber is by far my favorite <laughs> that's why we did all the close-ups on him <laughs> thank you to you guys for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did then leave a like and consider subscribing for more i've got another 3d printing video that's going to be coming out next week about how many miniatures fit in one resin bottle which we 
which will be quite fun as well. So if you are interested, then please consider checking that out as well. But otherwise, subscribe if you're interested in tabletop stuff or 3D printing or Warhammer. I cover it all. So thank you very much for tuning in. Hope you've enjoyed coffee time and uh, hopefully I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye now.